Hello, this is Brandon from HP Gadget Hacks. Today we're going to be doing a disassembly video on a Automoto three wheels covered scooter. Odd scooter, I'll give you a little walk around of it later. But uh, what I want to run through right now is how we're going to do it and remember all our parts and where all the screws go, which is the really hard part because there's at least 28 steps to disassembling the body. So first let's get our list of tools going here and here's all the tools you're going to need to get started you're going to need some WD-40 or equivalent to break some bolts loose and just to hold up some areas uh, some sandwich bags which I'll show you why shortly you'll need an allen head I don't know exactly what size it is but it's just one section you need it in and you'll be able to find one pretty easily and judge what size you need um, you need a 10 and a 12 millimeter wrench Ratcheting is not a necessity, but it really does make the job easier. Uh, you'll need a set of needle nose pliers, standard pliers, a sharpie, which I'll also show you why. Uh, two screwdrivers, you'll need a short Phillips head, and I like the long Phillips head, it just gives me better grip. Uh, a 10 and a 12 millimeter socket, a ratchet, and at least a 2 inch extension for the ratchet. Uh, anything bigger, you're going to run into problems, anything smaller, might get it done, I don't know, but this is everything I use to disassemble all of the body panels on the whole bike. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason we need the sandwich bags and the Sharpie is very simple. How we're going to keep up with all of our screws and clips and just all the pieces and what goes where is very simple. You're going to take the Sharpie and use it. Uh, first, we're going to remove the roof panel. I know this already. So, I'm going to write roof. I can't write very well when I hold my camera. <laughs> but I'm going to write roof. And I'm going to put all the screws, any clips that fall off and things like that, into this bag. And I'm going to mark it number one. Like I said, there are at least 28 steps to removing all of the panels. So, you should be number one through 28. I keep an extra bag for miscellaneous parts. And then when you go to reassemble, all you have to do is start at the you know last number and work your way back to one. And everything should go together well. Like I said, I do keep one for miscellaneous parts because especially if you buy one used, I ran into a lot of parts that had fallen off before, fallen down in the body. And that when I go to reassemble, I'll put back in the proper place. Uh, you might break some clips off and need to epoxy them back on. It's good just to keep a miscellaneous bag. But for every part you do, label it with the part. Put the screws, clips, anything that comes off of that part that will fit in the bag, in the bag, and then number it, you know, one, two, three, four, as you go along. Makes reassembly much easier, keeps you from losing parts, and you'll also have my video guide because there's a few sections where you'll be removing multiple sizes of screws, so you can always review back and forth through the video and see the correct placement for each screw. Uh, I'll probably have to break up this video into two or three sections just because it's a long, it took me maybe four or five hours to do a complete disassembly. Um, some help is nice if you can get help, but make sure it's somebody who can help you stay organized. Um, when you put a piece to the side safely, I suggest you put the bag that goes with it, or you can line the bags up in number if you remember what you named each part. <laughs> so now let's get into the teardown, guys. Hello from HB Gadget Hacks and I guess scooter disassembly now. <laughs> this is what's most commonly known as an Automoto three wheel scooter. This particular model is a Zine XY150ZK. It's a 150cc three wheel covered scooter. Very weird. My wife actually purchased this and then discovered that it's a little odd for her to drive. So she's going for a more standard scooter and uh, a friend of mine bought this but while out riding uh, and pretty much playing around he was just taking off and bam fell over so you can tip him it's a little harder than normal but it can be done uh, quite a few scuffs and scratches a couple small breaks so we are gonna do a disassemble video uh, we're gonna be tearing it completely down and repainting it, sanding, priming, but basically this video is going to be about the teardown because I haven't been able to find one. 
So um, we're gonna pretty much wing it here and uh, well, wish us luck because if it comes out well, I'll edit the video together where it looks as easy as possible and you know with the most simple set of directions and uh, then everybody can have a disassemble video for it. So uh, bear with us and uh, wish us luck. Okay, so we're gonna start disassembly with what seems like it would be the easiest part to take off the back cover here. If I'm correct, there are six or eight volts that have to be removed to take it off and we'll show you that next. Okay, that was fairly simple. It was 10 bolts in all. You have the two 10 millimeter license plate bolts. You have two 10 millimeter bolts right here. Uh, two 10 millimeter bolts here. And then you have a, a 12 millimeter bolt on each side right here. And then you pull straight back and it pretty much slides right off. So simple enough, on to the next step. Now we're gonna remove the back windshield which should have 10 screws in it, but mine's missing a couple, so eight for me. Hope you have 10. And there we are, the back windshield with 10 Phillips head screws. Uh, make sure you get the rubber pieces that go with the screws. And the seal should come off with the window. So make sure that's all intact so you don't lose anything. Okay, now that the back window's out, we're gonna start removing the inside parts. I'm gonna start from the back and work my way forward because it's in three sections. This is one section, this is a section, and this is a section. Uh, if all goes well, I'm gonna take all those off and uh, I'll come back and let you know if it went right. Okay, so the back pillar section here, as you can see, you have three screws and you have a fourth screw that on either side was hooked to nothing, so I really don't know what that's for. But uh, those three screws out, piece pulls away. You have to watch for the uh, little clips that the outside window goes to. And this section, if you want to, I would wait and pull all of this off at once. This one's been broken, so it popped right out with no problem. Uh, the other side is in pretty well, so I would wait and get the top section because every one of these sections, when you pull away, looks like the outside plastic attached is just going to pull off. So this next section, we have six bolts here. Sorry for the horrible angle. <laughs> we have three bolts across each, and then one, two, three, three, and another one of those that I'm not really sure if it does anything. So uh, I'll pull this section off and let you know how it goes. There's also five in a pattern on the roof, but it looks like that may just be for the headliner, sort of. <laughs> okay, for the top section to come off, the uh, screws in the very top do have to come out, but also I've discovered the windshield has to come off first. So we simply kick the uh, wiper blades back. We'll remove this windshield. I'm going to remove the screws from the inside pillar here and uh, we're going to go ahead and take all this off. Okay, now we've got the inside roof section pulled apart. I just had to pull the windshield loose. I didn't actually have to pull it all the way off and me myself, I have found that one of these nuts that are uh, connected to the plate has broken off and I'm having a little trouble with this. But to get this section out of the way, this is the inside roof section. This so far has been the hardest section to take off. We have multiple size screws. The very smallest ones you have go in these holes. So you don't get them confused. Uh, this actually came out of the corner section because now I see what those screws are supposed to be that I haven't had to pull off so far. There's so far one metal plate in here where I guess there should have been four. I don't know if it's gonna be the same on yours or not, but be prepared for that. Uh, these, the nut and bolt, go in to these two on front and back. Those actually go through the bar, the brace at the top, the safety brace right here and uh, hold it in place. Uh, the sm uh, middle size screws go in the center sections and all along the edge. 
the fattest head screws you have go in the outer edge sections. So, hope I made that easy enough for you. I'm sure I'll get some comments on this video. <laughs> but try to pay attention as you pull them out and you'll remember how they go back in. Oh, okay, I have this side of the front pillar off now. And I'm going to show you there's just one, two, three screws. And then you have a small nut here. And on the other side of that is a uh, small lag bolt and a clip. Uh, you're going to need probably a small set of uh, maybe needle nose pliers to grab the nut. I was actually able to do it with my finger, but I have kind of small hands. So if you have larger hands, it might be hard. But that comes out, the whole section comes out, and the nut comes off from the inside, and that's that. And then you have three of these screws in each side. And after that, it pulls right apart and slides out. Still be gentle. Uh, anytime plastic parts are on something that's ridden outside, uh, they tend to dry rot. So there you go. And now I can finally get the windshield off. There's that piece that I'm gonna have to maybe spot weld back together. Uh, but no big concern. And now that I have the other parts off, there's the windshield and all 14 screws that hold it. Uh, like I said, if you can, I would suggest taking it off first because it could easily slip off if you don't. But I was having trouble with uh, one of the nuts on these had broken loose from the clip and I could not quite get my pliers or any wrench in there to get it. So I had to do it the way I did. I would suggest you take the windshield off before the uh, front pillars and the roof if possible. Okay. So all that's done, and admittedly, I'm kind of stuck now. I don't know where to start next. <laughs> um, so since one has already been forcefully removed in a wreck, we're going <laughs> to remove the other mirror. Uh, as you can see here, there's not much to it. Two bolts hold the mirror on. Two bolts hold the bracket. I believe they're all 10 millimeter. And you have two quick disconnects for the, uh, for the turn signal. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, but... I also wanted to show you because we're pulling it apart to paint it. There's one nut there that holds the swivel arm on, uh, and two screws that hold the lens cover on. Excuse me. Ignore the glue we're repairing, uh, and ignore the black piece. <laughs> and this is the cover to the uh, nut there. But we'll fully disassemble that later. I'm going to pull this mirror off now and see where we go next. Okay, now we have all of the brackets and mirrors removed and in typical Chinese fashion two disconnects on the other side one disconnect here and one that I actually had to cut that I'm going to wire back in by hand uh, also you'll notice on the brackets I marked which way was up and from which side they came from just so I reinstall them right and the mirrors are in the correct direction so there's the whole mirror hello uh, <laughs> as it is the one I had to cut of course there's the plug installed uh, a little patch they put on previously it looks like uh, but you pull that plug out uh, you can pull the wires through the back section and that's what it looks like that's where we're going to be disconnected I really don't know what size that is just yet but I will make sure I'll leave it in the list of tools okay not 100% sure on where to go next but I'm gonna go ahead and pull the front fender or uh, I guess you'd call it a fender <laughs> off uh, then I'm going to remove this section, which I do believe should allow me to take off the side sections after I remove the dash. But I want to save all that for last because that's when we get into removing sections that involve wiring. So we'll be back with that. Okay, five 10 millimeter bolts and the front wheel section is off. You have two on each side, and then you have one in the back. The other one in the back connects to the rear part of it, which I did not even see before. Looks like two 10 millimeter bolts on it, and it's off. And I was correct. Two bolts, and it's out. Uh, it needs to slide down this way. And over here, you also have a small rubber grommet, which has the uh, speedometer cable. And when pulling out the bolt on this side, be careful because you do have the brake line. Uh, I got the grommet for the speedometer cable out by using the needle nose pliers and applying the light force to the inside. You don't fight it too hard or you will break it. So just be cautious there. But